Oh, you'll have to excuse me. I'm going to be sniffing a fair bit tonight. I, um, hay fever has been giving me an absolute hiding today. Um, I'm trying to medicate myself with a nice Pinot Grigio that, um, Beck sourced from down south. And I'd like to say it's working well, but I just am feeling a little bit more loose instead. So anyway, um, today, today was Easter Sunday. Uh, it was a good day. Uh, did I map out today yesterday? Yes, I did. And did I have any more anticipation other than hanging out with the family for Easter Sunday? No. And did I achieve that? With flying colours. <laughs> so, no, today was, um, yeah, very intentionally family day. I think typically Sunday as well as um, Easter Sunday. So, it was, um, I mean, even with the shop where, where you know, we're pretty quiet in Kalgoorlie. I'm, I'm sure the cities are different, but in Kalgoorlie, a lot of people go away. So, you know, Esperance was probably busier than usual on public holidays. We're pretty much dead. We only stay open for the fact that there's mining uh, miners and people who work every single day. And obviously we want to serve our community and our customers as best we can. So, um, but yeah, so <clears throat> pretty, uh, pretty chill day. We went, um, went to church this morning uh, it was the last day I'd see Bo, uh, for those who are familiar with Bo from Church of Christ, Bo Spencer. Um, there's very few people who I've met, having been born and raised in Kalgoorlie, there's very few people I've met that have um, established themselves as a pillar of the community as quickly as Bo and Emma have. So it's it's certainly a, a great loss uh, that they're moving, um, albeit I completely understand that, you know, it's for the betterment of their um, their family and you know, there's there's a responsibility that everybody has to the people within their care first, and um, and obviously even in a sense of you know leading a congregation and a pastor, they, that's they're not exempt from that. So yeah, so um, so then after that we went to oh actually <laughs> oh last night was a prick of a night. Um, Sterling was just waking so much. Um, we actually tried to get hold of a chiropractor today to see if um we could get him um just a few manipulations done on him or adjustments whatever they're called and um luckily we're we're headed off tomorrow for a few days and um luckily for us there was um a baby chiropractor actually she's going to be where where we're headed uh, which is really great. So she's going to sort us out tomorrow, which is super, super awesome. But man, the nights have been pretty rough and he's just writhing in pain and, and just randomly screaming. And, you know, so last night wasn't the best of night with nights with respect to um, to um, depth of sleep and, and length of sleep and just quality in general. Um, and funnily enough, what resulted was it was about, oh, probably from about 11, 11 p.m., so I was, I was, oh, and I actually would have been a little bit later. Yeah. So probably, probably close to about 1230 actually now I think of it somewhere around then. Um, yeah, he, he started firing up and, um, and my mind was just ticking. Like, um, I've been thinking more and more about the vision of where I want to take propaganda. And I, I and obviously that falls under like the, the bigger picture and the vision I have for my own life. And, um, and I've been getting clearer and clearer on that and it's getting, it's getting quite exciting. So, um, I am looking forward. I know I've said I've given myself a month. Um, so I'm going to continue to work on that in the back end, and, and before I can really make it public, obviously I have to speak to the team. And, um, so there's a, there's a fair bit to happen before I can share it publicly. Um, but it's the sort of thing where I go, I can see myself spending the rest of my life doing that, which is really, it's the first time I think I've ever come across something that grand um, and with that magnitude that warrants and excites me enough to um, to really wholeheartedly commit. Um, yeah, so that's really exciting. And, and and I can see that it can make a, a, a quite a significant impact to the to the broader community and, and not just the gold fields, which is even really great. So anyway, all that aside, um, I found it really, really hard to sleep. And uh, obviously I had a lot of excitement um, just, just thinking through things. And anyway, I was kind of dozing off and and um, we we can hear when the kids get out of bed. So I'm, I'm laying in bed and, and Beck's been in and out of sleep because, you know, she's got up and fed Sterling a few times and I've put him back down and, you know, and, and I hear one of the girls get out of bed. And before we went to, well, before we went to bed, um, you know, Beck, she's so, so good at making experiences really memorable for the kids. Um, you know, I think the, 
the skill that she has is not limited just to hospitality. I think that she's really great with making memories and making impactful memories. And, um, and she does that, you know, when it comes to putting on events like birthdays and she's just naturally, she's just got this knack. Hey, I would say for the most part, they're Alti's family. So her family that they they've got the knack for that. And, um, and so, yeah, so it, w- it was probably close to, um, yeah, at midnight by the time we got to bed and, um, you know, and she put these eggs out and all these sorts of things. And it must've been around probably two o'clock when, uh, she went out and she put all these like little baskets in place and chocolate eggs. And she figured, oh, okay, you know, like Lexi's probably, cause Lexi's the one that'll flip the lid and, <laughs> and she, uh, you know, I used to not get into the whole, like, you know, I, I think the tooth fairies are really poxy, but, um, uh, gosh, what is it? You know, Santa and the Easter Bunny. And I just think that, like, I was like, nah, listen, I'm, I don't buy into it. Nowadays, I'm like, it's just, it. it's fun to see the thrill and the excitement in the kids. I'm conscious that I'm literally lying to them. Um, I don't know where I stand with that. I, th- I feel like it's harmless fun. I don't really feel like it conflicts with my values. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't feel a value conflict, even though I know that if I'm going to go like you ride the line right down the line, then it it, it does. You know, um, Beck and I have made a pretty strict rule that we don't lie to our kids. Um, yeah. So that is conflicting. <laughs> anyway, I'll park that. Um, so Beck's really been pretty big on the Easter Bunny and, and Santa, and I've just kind of been complicit in that. Uh, pro- this year is probably the first time I've actually been actively involved in it, just because it, it it there's there's you, there's fun and you can do activities and and make it exciting. And so anyway, I'm laying in bed, so she's gone and just finished setting up all these Easter eggs and you know put the bunny footprints around the house and all that sort of thing. And I'm laying in bed, and um, and I hear these footsteps going to the toilet. <laughs> And I can, I can hear them. And I know because I hear them every single night, right? Uh, it's not always at 3 a.m. But yeah, I, I hear, you know, and, and, and I know that it stops short. And then there's a few more steps in the toilet. And I'm like, interesting. I'm thinking she's probably seen something that's trying to process it in a bleary-eyed state. And then I hear the toilet flush. And then I hear this like... <laughs> My door busts open <laughs> at 3 in the morning. I'm wide awake. I was already, I was waiting for it because I was listening. And Lexi's just standing at the door, this silhouette at, at the door of our room. Dad! Dad! Mom! Dad! The Easter Bunny came! The Easter Bunny came! <laughs> Beck was asleep. Rolls over. Lexi! Lex! Shh! And I'm like, darling. I was like, Lex, come here, come here, come here. I was like, sweetie. I was like, it's still in the middle of the night. I was like, you can't ruin the surprise for the other girls. You need to go back to bed. I know you're really excited. Rah, rah, rah. So off she goes. To her credit, she did go back to sleep. I was very surprised. I thought I was going to find out, you know, 5.30 in the morning. And anyway, so we got a couple more hours sleep. And, and um, you know, then the rest of the kids were up. And obviously, Lexi was pretty, um, pretty amped. Uh, but she plays along really well. God, she's so good. I, tr- I actually really, really trust her. Eh? And um, so she hadn't really flipped the lid and, and you know, we went in there because we could hear her mucking around and we went in there. They're all sitting in her bed reading books. So she hadn't she hadn't spilt the beans that, you know, all these chocolate eggs and that were out and about. And, uh, yeah, and we got up and, you know, and Beck had set some stuff out in the backyard. And so it was really cool. Yeah, it was a really, really cool time. Um, nice way to start the day. And then obviously we went to church and... And, um, and then, uh, went out to the folks place and that's when I was trying to organize, see if we could get in with the physio, um, just cause where we're staying, we don't want to be waking up the whole campsite at two thirty in the morning cause of a baby that's unrelentingly crying, uh, unrelentingly, unrelentingly, yeah, whatever. Um, you know, so yeah, so trying to knock it on the head before we go, cause that'd just be absolutely terrible. And, um, the only thing that makes any sense, and this is why I wanted to speak with a baby chiropractor is that, um, I mean, like when he was born, it was literally like went from being nothing like to three contractions and he was here. And when he came out, his whole head was bruised up. And that's where I'm like, that much pressure must do something. And, um, we did, we did take him to see, um, Tanya Kemp, Kemp, I think. 
think that's her last name. Anyway, from Goldfields Revitalize. Um, and she, she gave him a bit of a massage, the Savo, which was really, really, really um, accommodating of her. And I'm very grateful considering it's Easter Sunday. Um, so that was really nice. And, um, yeah, and then we came home and just finished packing up so we could, um, get going and got people staying at our house tomorrow to look after it while we're gone, which is, which is really convenient. So, um, yeah, so just getting ready for all that. And, um, yeah, so anyway, um, that was funny. Yeah, it was a funny start to the morning. So no, it was, it was a nice Arvo, um, spending out at the in-laws place and, um, and, oh, this is really cool. Lex, um, we've been telling the kids, you know, Lexi's saying she doesn't want to go to school and, and I, and I understand that, like, you know, I understand that there's some things that you don't want to do, but you have to do. But I also think that there has to be a level, like, like learning has to be fun. And when I think around, like, like, for instance, like there's all these things that I'm wanting to learn in the business and like, and I, and I, I just, I love books. I consume books and not to say I consume it in the sense that it's like mental masturbation, but in the sense where like one of, one of the things at the start of the year, I had this moment where, um, you know, Beck said to me, she was like, oh, cause my birthday's around Christmas time. So we went away with Christmas, I uh, went away with the family and everyone's like, what do you want to do birthday at uh, Christmas, uh, your birthday morning? And I just said, I just would actually really like an hour to myself. So I got up really early and went down to the beach and, and spent some time there. And, you know, and not to say like, I think, you know, like, oh, my word for the year and all that is really poxy and, and boring. Um, but for whatever reason, I, I kind of had this moment where I was like, you know, what do I want this year to look like? And, um, and, and the thing that came to mind, and I think that this is really cool when you get your conscious mind out of the way and you just let whatever comes to mind just pop up. Um, I find it quite uh, illuminating. And, um, and the thing that came up for me was, was this is to be the year of wisdom. And I know that that sounds really like inflated and, um, you know, uh, egotistical, but my, and it's, this is where the clarification is necessary because I believe that wisdom is knowledge applied and, and I have a lot of knowledge, but especially early in the piece, like, you know, earlier in the podcast, or I think it was season one, where I was kind of giving the preamble to where we are. You know, I was listening to a lot of Jordan Peterson's work. And, and I think that understanding and making sense of the world and everything else is important. But I know that a lot of people um, argue the validity of, of modern day philosophers because it's not applied. You look at you, know, you look at the Stoics and you look at um, the likes of Confucius or that. What was that? Miyamoto or he was that samurai over in Japan. And, you know, and, the, and these guys like, you know, Marcus Aurelius, classic. Like he's a poster boy for Stoicism. And, um, and, and philosophy as well, because obviously stoicism is philosophy, at least one of the like, um, earlier parts. And, um, and, and these were people who were in the marketplace, they were on the battlefield and they were coming up with philosophy that was applicable to life, that not philosophy that was insulated from life. And I think that when you come up with like philosophies and you develop this, you know, way of thinking that is, is insulated from the real world, I think that that's where it gets a bit dangerous. Um, and that's, you know, and, and not to say that I, I don't really understand and only because I haven't really looked into it, but like Marxism, except that I know that, you know, um, like Lenin and, and, and was it Stalin? I'm pretty sure it was Joseph or, ah, anyway, I would see, I, I, don't, I don't know it enough to really comment on it, but, um, it's, it seems to me from what I understand about Marxism is that it's, uh, like the concept was really formulated in a silo. You know, he was really removed from from the struggles of economic life and, you know, and creating this theory that technically works, but in practice doesn't. And, um, and, and, and again, I, I am speaking out of school here because I really, I don't understand the entire concept and maybe there are parts of it that is valid. Um, but yeah, yeah. Whereas, it, and my point being is a lot of like people go and study philosophy and, understand how to like, you know, um, make sense of the world. And a lot of the argument now is that there's, it's, is that it's insulated from the real world. You know, it's, it's, you have, you don't build philosophies in conjunction with doing life. You, you build philosophy to do life and it's, it's just its own little silo. So, um, oh, geez, how the hell did we get onto that? Um, Gosh, you'll have to forgive me. That was absolutely that was a tangent and a half. Yeah, I'll probably hook back to it in the next few minutes, but uh, maybe not. I feel like it's kind of gone in if I'm to be honest. 
Oh, learning. That's right. Yeah. So, so one of the things that I really believe is that, you know, you, you have to gain this knowledge because you, ha- you, you, you can't gain wisdom without knowing what to apply, right? So you have to gain the knowledge first, but then it, it's, it's not just like we live in this information age and, you know, reading books and thinking that you know things and all that sort of stuff is all well and good, but, you know, all it is is just dopamine hits, but it's in a different way. Instead of being on your feed, it's, it's you know, it's this growth dopamine. And, um, and I think that it's, it's better, but you still actually have to apply it. And, and I think that's been a big focus for me this year is, okay, actually doing the things that I am learning. And, um, you know, and so what, one of them, like I gave a presentation on leadership, um, a few weeks back and that was really cool. Uh, cause one of the things I wanted to learn was a bit more about public speaking, which I'm at the, again, I'm doing this, like this program and, um, you know, and getting better at, at presenting and holding, um, ho- holding an audience. So that's, um, yeah, so actually putting it into practice. And this year has been really great. So, um, yeah. Anyway, that's that. I'm just going to park that there because I have no idea how I got to there. So maybe one of the skills I need to learn is how to actually follow my own bloody train of thought. Um, yeah, so... Hmm... <clears throat> I'm just looking at my notes here. Uh, I've been reading this book called um, The Influential Mind by Tally Sharrett. Really, really cool. And I know that I alluded to um, tomorrow I'm actually meeting up with Ben. I know I mentioned him a couple of days ago that um, I'm going to catch up with him and, and, and go around my whole health thing. And and I'm not satisfied with my level of health, but I'm very um, nonchalant about it either as well. I'm just like, I kind of don't really care. Um, which sound, it sounds like it sounds ridiculous to say, right? But and, and I'll 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 hink, look this. Hink, oh, oh my goodness! If I can put a word together, I'll hook this back into this book I'm, I'm reading in a second. Um, the the biggest thing that I realize is that there's it's almost like there's no point me putting the, in the effort because I feel like everything that we eat, the entire food industry, is completely buggered. So it's kind of like no point me actually putting in any effort. In this book, everyone's heard about the marshmallow experiment, right? Where it's like they, they took all these kids between four and six years old and, and they set them a marshmallow and the, and the um, I'm just called scientists, said to them, researchers, re- researchers said to them, if you can wait for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever it was, um, we'll come back and if you haven't eaten it, I'm going to give you two marshmallows. And so then they gave, gave these kids the marshmallows and or they didn't, you know, depending on, on whether the kids waited or not. And, and they noted, you know, like some kids sat on their hands, some kids distracted themselves with nursery rhymes and all these things. And, and then they came back, I think this was in the 60s, they did this experiment. They came back, you know, when the kids was in high school and they measured them against all these different aptitudes. And and um, and there was a correlation between the kids that ate the marshmallows and the kids that, um, sorry, the kids that uh, succumbed to the temptation of the first marshmallow instead of waiting for the second. Uh, and how well they were, they were doing in life and school. And so there's, so it's, it's a really, really easy parallel to draw that, okay, like if you're disciplined and if you can be self-controlled, well, guess what? The world's your oyster and, and you know, um, on your bike, great. You know, achieve the heights of success. And um, and I, so I, I've, I've never really bought into that. I just, you know, I remember the first time I heard it, this bloke I was working with and he was telling me about it and he's like, yeah, it's all about discipline and hard work and, and I was looking at his life. I was like, fuck, if that's, if that's what that looks like, I'm not interested. And, um, and genuinely one of the hardest workers in my life in, in, that I've ever met. As a quick side note, very controversial statement, but I stand by this. Hard work is lazy because the hard work is really in challenging your assumptions, cha- changing your beliefs and, and growing. It's so much easier just to go clock a 12 hour shift. It's so much easier to clock a 12 hour shift than to sit down with someone who can unpick your entire life and start to understand, well, why do you do what you do and actually stare your demons in the face? That shit's hard. And I don't see many people do it. And it's a lot easier to just be like, well, I just worked and my wife's ungrateful because look at everything I provide for. And she's so ungrateful, bitch. And like, look at everything that goes wrong to me. Like, how about you grow a pair and how about you actually take ownership for your shit too? So... Um, I'm obviously not passionate about that point. That was sarcasm in case anyone was wondering. Um, <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I, I, I think that discipline is, is a part of the equation. And, um, 
And I remember hearing a while ago that they were saying there's more to the story. It's not just about, you know, how much can you grit your teeth and get through something and therefore you'll be successful. Um, it's it's also, well, how do you view the world and is it, is it worth, uh, is there any point in waiting? So later, I think it was a few decades later, or I, I don't know the time frame, but nonetheless, uh, if I remember correctly, it was another research group over in the UK wanted to, um, I guess, revisit the experiment, but extend on it. And so what they did was they got the same group of kids, same age groups. Uh, and what they did was they gave them coloring in or something like that. It was something that involved crayons anyway. And they gave them packs of crayons and the crayons were really, really hard to open. And, uh, and the, the researchers said, hey, listen, I'll, I'll just give me a few minutes. I'm just going to go sort some stuff out. I'll come back with, with some, some crayons that you guys can actually use. So, um, so they, they went for a few minutes and they came back and half the group they gave, or the two groups. So the first group they gave, um, these new crayons, totally cool. They did what they said they were going to do. The second group, they came through and they're like, Hey, listen, I'm really sorry. You guys, you're kind of stuck with the, the shitty crayons. And, um, so then they did these drawings or whatever, whatever they were doing with these crayons. And then they did the marshmallow experiment. And the assumption was, if you are exposed to an environment where the future has been promised, but is uncertain and is proven to be uncertain, then, um, how much follow through is there? And as they suspected that the people who, uh, the kids who, um, who were promised something and received it that they that they were more than happy like i think it was i can't remember I can't, i'll butcher the statistic but check it out if you want to check it out um tally sharrett influential mind uh marshmallow experiment just google that and no doubt it'll pop up and um and it overwhelmingly the the kids waited for the second marshmallow Whereas in the second group where they didn't follow through with what they said about the crayons, overwhelmingly the kids didn't wait for the marshmallow for the second marshmallow, and so so this I, straight away I was reading this and I looked at it and I was like, oh wow, that's me. It's like to me I'm like, there's no point. And it kind of confirmed where I was already at is that I've got this value for comfort around my health and and um, my fitness where it's just like, oh, it, 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 there's no point. I feel like there's no point because it doesn't matter what I do that you know all the foods bug it anyway. You know like and. Um, and so I'm really, really curious because I don't like it, but the stories I tell myself anyway is that it's like, well, there's no point. And, um, or if there is a point, it's like, you know, have to go spend a couple million buying a farm and then, you know, set it all up. And by that time it's 15 years down the track and I'm probably, you know, probably done too much damage anyway. And then that's, that's the, that's the narrative that's going on in my head and I don't like it. Um, but I see a lot of evidence to support it. <laughs> so, so I'm very, very curious to see what Ben has to say. Um, I, I, I have a lot of respect for his um, acumen with respect to health and, and the body. Um, yeah, and like I said, provided he's uh, happy for me to relay and, uh, and share, then yeah, then I'll, I'll put it up here. Um, so that's, that, was, that was interesting. Um, oh, yeah, the kids. Um, it's probably the last point for today. Lexi, Lexi was at church and she started for whatever reason. And I love this. So she's six years old and she just started wanting to do maths. So she just started writing like addition and subtraction equations and, uh, and really basic ones. But and then she asked Beck and Beck wrote this whole sheet, this whole page full of equations. And, and she loved it. And she just started just, and I'm like, man, like this kid just never ceases to amaze us. You know, like even, um, a few weeks back, I had a, I had an extra dryer sitting there and, and I, I had it for 50 bucks. Oh, like, I said to the girls, I said, I want 50 bucks, but if you give me 50 bucks, then you can sell this as much as you want. And, uh, and you just give me 50 bucks and you can keep the difference. So just trying to teach them about business and different ways to make money and, and get them to normalize that from a really young age. And, um, and so anyway, so we got the money and then we actually had to count it. You know, and so then I, I was trying to show her the difference between, okay, like here's these $5 notes, but it's these many $5 notes is not as valuable as this big yellow note. And ch just trying to like, okay, you know, like there's tens and twenties and you know, like this many and then, and she got it, which is incredible, like 10 times multiples. And she actually understood, she was able to relay it back to us. And I was going like, girl, you are switched on. So, and she just is, she is so excited about making money. Like, and I think around like, um, if you guys haven't read the story of Laszlo Polgar, if 
I want to say Polish. He sounds very Polish. It might be another country, but Laszlo Polgar. Just check that out. If talk about normalizing education and making education really, really, really fun with the intent of creating geniuses from his children. And he did it. Super, super, super cool case study. The guy, and I'm not saying this to be funny or rude to the, you know, to the autistic community. I genuinely think the guy must have been autistic because he, he, this is way, way, way back, right? He wrote a letter to this girl that he found. If, if, it, if I remember correctly, this is how the story goes and fact check me because I might have this wrong. Uh, he wrote a letter to the girl in his town um, who was a teacher. He fancied her and he was like, hey, listen, if you're up for it, you know, maybe we should get together and um, I want to like pretty much run an experiment with his children to see, you know, our children to see if we can um, make geniuses effectively. And she was like, well, how about we start dating first and just go from there? <laughs> Long story short, he pulled it off. God knows how, but, you know, a hilarious story. And, um, yeah, and, and these these girls became chess prodigies. If I remember correctly, The Queen's Gambit is actually written, well, is based around one of his daughter's lives. And, um, and just how he did that was super interesting. So I think normalizing, normali- when, I, when I think around, how do people do things? I think that you have to identify as at first. Like you're not going to invest money unless you identify as someone who is an investor. You're not going to, um, you know, get into the boxing ring unless you identify as someone who could be a good fighter. And I think that, you know, the identity that you build in your children is super, super important. Um, not to say, not to say that you should instill your vision and live vicariously through your kids, but I think that it's very important that you normalize um, that you normalize healthy skills. Let's just call it that. Uh, that's so vague. I'm so sorry. Uh, you know what? It's getting late. I can't really articulate this effectively. I hope it makes sense, but... You know, I think there's a lot of things that aren't normalized that are really, really healthy that should be normalized. And um, I think it's actually a lot easier achieved. And the biggest thing is, do you identify as that person? So that's that. Um, Yeah, cool. Today was a good day. Bye.